Let me welcome you and let me on behalf of the family, uh, that is Brother Chris and Sister Rhonda and Brother Todd and Sister Gail, uh, let me say it's certainly good to have you here. We're thankful for your being here and uh, this memorial service, I pray it'll be a exclamation point in your heart and your life for years to come. Let me also say that uh, uh, we, are, we have a meal prepared and trust that everyone will stay and eat with us afterwards and fellowship with the family and enjoy one another. We did not come here to run away. We came here to enjoy you and you came to sympathize and enjoy us. And so we're thankful and we want you to take that this, this day and this time and enjoy one another. If you do pick up a uh, commemorative card, a, a program with Brother Leo's picture upon it, inside that folder you'll find a blank sheet of paper. And that is for you, if you would uh, please write a, a memorandum that you have of him, um, uh, something that you know special that, uh, that it, he has influenced your life or maybe a story or something, if you would do that, there's a bas basket here and a basket out here. If you put that in there, they'd have that and it would be a sacred treasure to them uh, from here on out. So we're thankful for your being here and we praise the Lord for you. And I ask you just to enjoy what the Lord gives to us today. All right. It's good to have Brother Grant. Brother Grant, you come and sing for us. What a blessing it is to have uh, Brother Grant. Amen. I had only known the last time would be the last time Would have put off all the things I had to do Would have stayed a little longer Held on a little tighter Now what I'd give for one more day with you There's a wound here in my heart where something's missing And they tell me that it's gonna heal in time But I know you're in a place where all your wounds have been erased And knowing yours are healed is healing mine only scars in heaven won't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing as broken, and all the old will be made new. And the thought that makes me smile now. Even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven Are on the hands that hold you now I know the road you walked was anything but easy You picked up your share of scars along the way But now you're standing in the sun You fought your fight and your race is run The pain is all a million miles away And the only scars in heaven That don't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now Even as 
the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven Are on the hands that hold you now Hallelujah 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 For the hands that hold you now There's not a day goes by that I don't see you And you live on and on in the better parts of me Until I'm standing with you in the sun I'll fight this fight and this race I'll run Until I finally see what you can see That's the only scars in heaven don't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down That the only scars in heaven Are on the hands that hold you now Brother Leo and Sister Patsy celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. Uh, there was a, a uh, memorandum that was written. And uh, uh, so I wanted to read it today because it says so much about those two. It said, on January 5th, 1955, Patsy Camper and Leo Bryant met on a blind date with their friends Ralph McFadden and Jeanette Tyler. They went riding on the Blue Ridge Parkway, stopped at the overlooks. Patsy, Patsy put snow down Leo's neck. <laughs> Afterwards, Patsy's mother asked, asked her uh, what she thought of her blind date. Patsy said, I thought he was pretty cute, but uh, evidently he didn't feel the same about me because he didn't ask me out on another date. However, the next Saturday evening, he showed up at their house, and since she had plans to go with Jeanette uh, roller skating, he took them roller skating. From that day on, they had a standing date every Saturday night and Sunday. Leo lived in Charlottesville and worked at Vance Buick Auto Sales. Patsy had school all week. In August 1959 or 55, Patsy went with Leo to her first Bryant reunion and met the relatives. <laughs> now that was a little hint right there, you know. I didn't think she, I, I don't think she realized that she would have more than 50 years of Bryant reunions after that. Over the next year, they spent quite a bit of Leo's hard earned money. And sometimes even his last dollar at the, uh, Redwood restaurant eating toasted fried ham sandwiches with lettuce, tomatoes, and mayonnaise, going to the Buena Vista drive-in, and riding around in the 1955 Buick listening to rock and roll music. Their favorite song was Sincerely. On May 5th, 1956, Leo proposed marriage to Patsy. He was pretty confident because he'd already bought a ring. Patsy's mom and dad 
were delighted because they thought Leah was the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> June 56, Patsy graduated and started work at Bonded Fibers uh, as an office clerk. Uh, they set their wedding date for November 16th and talked about where they would live. Patsy's daddy offered uh, to build them a house and charge them rent, and so they decided to move to Buena Vista. On November the 1st, 1956, Leo moved to Lexington with his grandparents and started a new job as a carpenter with his father-in-law. On November 16th, 1956, they were married at the First Brethren Church, Buena, Buena Vista, by Reverend Ed Lewis. Uh, Doris Camper, sister of the bride, was the bridesmaid, and Marvin Bryant, uncle of the bridegroom, was the best man. They especially remember that Leo's little brother, Jimmy, five years old at the time, was crying at the wedding because he said he was losing his big brother. A reception was held at the bride's home, followed by a weekend honeymoon at Roanoke and Petersburg. On February the 1st, 1957, they moved into the house that Patsy's father had built and a new uh, furniture was delivered. But they had failed to buy tables, end tables. So Bill and Doris Bryan offered to loan them some end tables. They gratefully used those end tables until Bill was called, called one night and said that they were moving to Richmond and needed those end tables. On April the 18th, 1960, their baby girl, Rhonda Gale, was born. Uh, she was the first grandchild on both sides, and uh, that's one of the reasons that she turned out like she is. The first grand young and always gets a little bit more attention, you know. And so she's the first grandchild on either side, and so she received lots of attention. Um, Patsy picked the name for her while she was in high school. She said, if ever I have a little girl, I'm going to name her Rhonda Gale. And so that's exactly what she did. 1962, Leo started building the home that they still lived in at the point of this 50-year anniversary. In fact, that's the same home that Brother Leo went to be with the Lord in. And it was a good home, raised a good family, and uh, put together with more than just nails and two befores. That was my part of the thing there. <laughs> it took a year to complete it, but they moved from uh, moved in in November 63. Patsy helped put up the rafters, and to this day, Inscribed on one of the rafters is a message. Patsy loves Leo and Rhonda. Of course, Chris hadn't come on the scene at that time. On October the 11th, 1965, their baby boy, Christopher. Christopher Lee was born. He was several days old before he got his name. Sister Patsy wanted to call him Leo Jr., and Brother Leo, he objected to it. He said, no, that's not the way it's going to be. And he returned to the hospital the next day and suggested Chris. Now, the story is, and what they think, is that he went home, saw one of those old westerns, and one of those old westerns, the main character in the western, was named Chris, and he came back and named Brother Chris, Chris. Leo gave up carpentry and started driving a tractor trailer truck for Smith Transfer. He eventually owned several of his own trucks and leased them in various, to various companies before he grew tired of being away from home so much. In 1984, he went to work at Clark's Exterminating and retired from there in 98. He continues, of course, that's at this time. He continues to do odd jobs and stays busy with family and with friends. Patsy went to work for the Marshall Foundation in 73 and retired from there in 97. She stays busy at this time, keeping her grandchildren and enjoying family and friends. 
In 1995, Rhonda Gale married Todd Wilmore, their favorite son-in-law. And that's a real blessing. And Chris married Gail, which is their favorite daughter-in-law. And what a blessing that is. Then Grammy and Granddaddy got uh, uh, Granddaddy, uh, uh, long, the long-awaited day arrived when in 1999 the first grandchild was born, Michaela Grace Bryan. Next came their second one, Faith uh, Marie Whitmore, uh, Wilmore, Wilmore, and, uh, not in, in 03. And then, uh, in 05, their first grandson, Grant Alexander Bryant was born, and what a joy they have brought to everyone's lives. Now, uh, the last little paragraph of this note carries for us a tremendous truth. Fifty years of growing changing, and new experiences. It all began with a blind date between a boy from Charlottesville and a girl from Buena Vista, which reaffirms that God's plan for our lives happens no matter what the distance or the circumstances. Patsy and Leo are happy to say that, a, that they've had a lifetime of putting God first in their lives, and it's been a recipe for a long and happy marriage. And as a result of that fact, they themselves, their children, their uh, in-laws have all been saved by the grace of God and will spend eternity in heaven. Just the other day, Brother Leo checked out of this world and checked into that one, and waiting on that shore was Sister Patsy, to take his hand. And what a wonderful joy that is for us. That was at their 50th wedding anniversary, and that was 16 years ago. And today we are uh, commemorating a wonderful life of a blessed brother and friend. At this time, uh, Brother Grant and Sister Michaela and Sister Faith, uh, the grandchildren are going to sing a song for us, all right? Y'all go ahead and get ready, and they're going to sing a song. Amen. So this song is called I'm Home, and it was brought because of a story from Rhonda especially, but also our family. Whenever uh, Granddaddy would go out and go to dinner with us or whatever, when he would get home, he would always call. Out gallivanting. Yeah. <laughs> they, he would, he would call Rhonda, and she would say, Hi, Dad, and his first words would be, I'm home, and now he can say that he is home. Imagine a place of beauty where the streets are paved with gold and the walls are made of jasper and the crystal river flows. A place where mansions line the streets and the night will never be. I can't wait till I can say I'm home.
can't wait till I can say I'm home. I am home. I am home. I can see King Jesus on his throne. There's my family and my loved ones. you so much when you know where something is you've not lost it and we know where our loved one is we've not lost him we gather today in order to commemorate and remember things about him that have been a special blessing to us or influence upon us in days gone by and uh, we want to in some way make an explanation uh, what do you uh, uh, what do you call that little mark at the end of the sentence exclamatory mark at the end of the sentence in our life concerning brother leo it's been my habit for a number of years as a pastor I look out over a congregation and I see the faces of different ones and I miss them when they're not there. But while they are there, I enjoy them and I thank the Lord for them. And as I'm reading the scriptures, sometimes a verse that fits a person will come into my heart and I'll write their name beside it And if I am privileged to speak at their leaving, their home going, their celebration, that'll be the verse that I use. And I've done that with numbers of them in this congregation right here. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what verse I put beside some of you, but but, uh, (laughs) there's some of you, you know, I've got your name there and when it comes time to say something over you, I hope you're doing good when I find it, because, you know. And I put this Brother Leo's name beside this verse several years ago. I'd like to read the verse to you and read a few verses, and then I'd like to talk to you about Brother Leo for a few moments. The verse that I marked and that has his name by it in my Bible is Psalms 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. That verse rang out in my heart some years ago about Brother Leo. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. There are several other verses that I'd like to read in conjunction to that. The Bible says here, though he fall, that is a good man, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Again, the scripture says the law of God, of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slip. The scripture says, mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. 
Salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. Then again, just the other day, Sister Rhonda was reading the Bible when Brother was getting ready to make his exit from this world. And she pointed out a passage that to me became precious even as she pointed it out. The Bible says over in Psalm 73, Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by thy right hand. I think that that's true of all God's people. God does hold them. And especially does he hold them in these times like this. And especially did he take our brother and hold his hand as he crossed the river. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and after receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee and there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth but God is the strength of my heart. What a comfort those verses are to us and how we can enter into a greater reality of those verses even with our loved one that is passed on. Let me go back if I may and say just a word or two about Brother Leo. I mean, I'm kind of caught up in the thought of him. I've been walking with him all day and uh, uh, half the night and I was trying to narrow it down, some of the things I wanted to express about him. Now, you know, it's one thing to be thought of as a good man by men. And certainly that is a good thing. I think it would be good for all of us to be thought of by our peers and by those that we brush shoulders with every day. And so that is a good thing to be thought of as a good man, as a good man by men. Uh, but I won't say it's an infinitely better thing to be thought of as a good man by God. If God would declare that you're a good man, I, I would say that would be a, that would be the highlight. That would be the peak. That would be the, the whole big deal. And the Bible says concerning that, that when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. I've only had the privilege of being Brother Leo's pastor for the last seven years. I did know him before that. However, I've never heard anybody say anything negative about Brother Leo. Now, I'm sure there may have been, but I have never heard that. And I've realized that even those that would have had to have certain regard for the kind of man and individual he was. Our brother Leo was a, was a good man on both accounts, both before the eyes of men and before the Lord. And his ways did please the Lord. And as evidence of that, men were at peace with him. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Now, not only are the steps of a good man ordered by the Lord, but I want to say the starts and the steps and the stops in a man's life are ordered by the Lord. The starting point, precious friend, was, of course, y'all call her Granny. I called her, uh, you know, Sister Bryant. And I got where I called her Granny. Uh, I called her Granny. Y'all, some of y'all called her Polly. But the starting point for Brother Leo, of course, was in uh, uh, June 16th. He discovered this world at Iron Gate, Virginia, and uh, he was right close to his mama. You know, that's where she was, and that's where he is born. And uh, uh, it was a blessed time because of the fact that, you know, we, we're of the people that do not believe in accidents. Uh, we believe God does things on purpose. We believe in divine providence. And uh, when Brother Leo, Leo was born there at Iron Gate, his father, Charles Herbert Bryant, and his mother, Mildred Lucille Ash Bryant, Granny, 
Uh, uh, they had gotten together. They had a little baby boy uh, by the name of Leo. Leo's granddaddy was a preacher. So I'm very conscious that in his early years, he was introduced to things about the Lord. He knew something about God. He knew something about the Bible. He knew something about, you know, the church. Uh, he probably knew a little bit about some of the folks in the church that he shouldn't have known, but he knew about the Lord. He was introduced to those things early in his life. And uh, having been like that, the things of God were somewhat familiar to him in many respects. Uh, but you know a man, and the Bible describes a good man, a man may be a good or decent man before he gets saved, but it's impossible for him to be a Christian man before he gets saved. And so somewhere down the line, the Spirit of God began to move in Brother Leo's heart and begin to draw him. Sometimes I think that, you know, God uses young ones to help us, as he did with Brother Leo. It was Ron and Brother Chris going to church that began to start the movement of God in their daddy's heart that he ought to be in church. And so mama was not good enough, and daddy's religion was not good enough. Family heritage, and this family has a rich heritage, but that wasn't good enough. And it became apparent to Brother Leo that, that there was something missing in his life. In fact, the more he went on, the more he realized that in his first birth, there were some complications. They didn't actually start showing up till later. As he began to get older, he found out that his hands grabbed wrong things and at times held wrong things and sometimes did wrong things. He tried to straighten them out, but every once in a while they just get a little bit out of the way. He found out that during his first birth, as he grew, his feet, they would take him to the wrong places. And he would try to avoid some of those things, but next thing you know, he'd be in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing. He further examined his life and he realized that his tongue wasn't as pure and lily white as it ought to be. And once in a while things would slip out that perhaps shouldn't slip out. In fact, something slipped out around his mama one day and she hit him with a piece of stove wood and it stopped slipping out around her. But his tongue, what was wrong with his tongue? It, it would speak things it shouldn't speak and tell things it shouldn't tell. Now, after a while, he realized that it wasn't his hands and his feet, and it was his heart. His heart was not right. His first birth gave him a bad heart to go through this life with. Then, dear friend, and I got it off of a little piece of paper that that grandma, I guess it was grandma, wasn't it, that wrote it down, or one of the aunts, wrote the little piece of paper down and a little notes on that paper. And several names was also on that paper that said, December 23rd, 1979, Leo accepted the Lord. Leo got saved. I'll tell you, there was a lot wrong with his first birth, but there was nothing wrong with that second birth. He became a new creature in Christ. He got a new heart. He was made new. He had a new disposition. Everything about him changed. And from that day until the day he left this world, he loved the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to God for that. He had a starting point. I wonder if you had a starting point in your life where you come to know the Lord and meet the Lord, had the free Pardon of sin applied to you, the blood of Christ applied to you. Brother Leo knew about that. And uh, I was thinking about that first birth, you know. That first birth, 
Everybody knew him. It was from down here. It was an earthly thing. But that second birth was a heavenly birth. He was introduced to God. God became his father. And what a wonderful thing that is. He was never to be the same again. And when he got saved, he did not look back. Kept on going with the Lord. Sometimes I believe a man may be a decent man, a hardworking man, a good family man, things of that nature. But I'm going to tell you, only God can take and change your heart and make a man a real good man. And so he had a starting point in his life. Then I'll tell you the steps in his life, the progress in his life, as he began to live and began to walk with the Lord and before the family. He lived in this world and uh, he was a good man. He was a good husband. Sister Patsy could have declared unto you that he was a good husband. He and Sister Patsy lived 66 years before she made her exit out of this world together. In fact, uh, they met on a day, they met, they dated, they married, they raised two wonderful children in that order. Can I have an amen right there? Amen. That, I mean, we've gotten things out of order today, but they did it in order. Isn't that something? They raised two wonderful children together, the old fashioned way, 66 years. In the latter years, Sister Patsy, of course, you remember, contracted that Alzheimer's disease. And uh, that certainly stifled a lot of things and uh, perhaps would have made many folks question a lot of things. But I'll tell you one thing that was never questioned was Brother Leo's love for Sister Patsy. When he couldn't keep her any longer at the house, she had to go over to Kendall. Brother Leo was at Kendall nurturing and nursing her every day at the hospital. I tell you, he got to, the nurses got to knowing him very well. Around. In fact, he knew him first name. He took me over there. I walked down through there and I thought everybody in the whole country knew Brother Leo over at the nursing home. And uh, I, I told him, I said, Brother Leo, you sure do know a lot of these folks over here. He said, well, Brother Ralph, I've been coming here 16 months. Every now and then he'd take them ice cream over there just to do something special for them. What a wonderful thing it was. Sister Patsy, when she made her exit out of this world, Brother Leo was rejoicing with her that one day he would see her again and she wouldn't be in the same shape that she was when she left this world. She was ever his love and... Uh, of course, he loved the Lord, but he loved his wife. And uh, when she went home to be with the Lord last January, Brother Leo loved her all the way unto her death. He is a good husband. Tell you something else he was. He was a good daddy. I look at Brother Chris and Sister Rhonda. I tell you, your daddy was a good man. He was a good daddy. He's a family man. He enjoyed his family. He enjoyed them when they went camping. He liked to play with them. They get out there frolicking and playing. He'd be right in the middle of the frolic and in the middle of the play. And uh, he liked the the family reunions. Uh, I I know the Bryant family. They have about ninety seven of those things every year. When I first when I first came down here, that's the first thing he took me to was a family reunion, you know. And uh, uh, he, he, I guess he just felt like I could just step right in and and be be a bride. My my wife, one of y'all, one of y'all's relatives, come down South Dakota or somewhere. She hadn't been there in a long time, and. Uh, my wife introduced herself. The, your relative asked, said, said, who are you? She said, well, I'm Ann Bryant. She said, oh, you are. Uh, you know, and so, so I guess we just kind of fit in in that crowd, you know. We've enjoyed it and we rejoiced in it. 
But he's a family man. He loved those family reunions. I mean, his life centered around family and things of that nature. Uh, going fishing over at Corn Job. He loved all that stuff and, and he took time. Listen, men, we could certainly learn that in our families, if we're going to be a good family man, you got to take time to be a daddy. That's why he would take Chris with him, whether he was working or whatever he was doing. It takes time to be a good family man. Your wife spells love, T-I-M-E, the time you spend with her. And so he's a good, a good daddy. And, uh, you may catch him out there at Dalford on a jet ski, you know, swimming through there. Somebody says, what's that old man doing? He says, he's acting crazy. <laughs> you know. You may catch him up there, out there on the, on the back side of the pasture on one of those four wheelers or one of those carts zooming through there. Boy, that thing will run. Who is that? Well, that, you know, well, it'd be him, all right. He loved that kind of thing. He spent time with his family. He took time for them. Vacations, you'll look at some of these pictures around here. Some of them were taken on the vacations. Uh, in fact, when they went out to Yellowstone, big old crowd of them had to rent a uh, 747 jet, take them out there. You know, big old crowd of them went out there. You got a picture of them back there. Sister Patsy tickled me. She was the one dressed up like Sister Kitty there on <laughs> Gunsmoke, you know. But it was a wonderful thing. He loved that. And I, and, and I thank God for that. In a day and an hour when, when fa family men are, are looked down upon, I'm glad, thank God for a good family man. He was a good man. You know why he was a good family man? It's because God made him a gift to this family. Hallelujah to God. Then also, not only is he a good family man, but I'll tell you something else. He's a good friend. A good friend. If you had Leo Bryant as a friend, you had a good friend. He had many friends. And uh, the Bible said if a man's going to have friends, he's got to show himself friendly. Friendliness was one of the chief characteristics of Brother Leo. Didn't matter where he was or who you were, he'd talk with you. He was a friendly individual. You look at the crowd here today. That's a testimony to his friendship and to his friendliness. I was going to try to name a few of them, but I dare not try to name... In fact, the pallbearers the other day, uh, the list of pallbearers was printed in our program, but it had to be taken out. Sister Rhonda was afraid we was going to leave somebody out, you know, to try to name all the friends that Brother Leo has today. We couldn't do it. We'd leave somebody out. There are a couple that were life, life, lifetime friends of him, and some of you are even here. But Brother Sandy Camper, he was a lifelong friend of Brother Leo. I think of others. I think of Brother Thurman Clark, Brother Cecil. Oh, oh, he was a friend of Brother Leo. And so I'm, I'm so grateful. And in this day, in this hour, friendship is a valuable commodity. Wasn't long ago he started bringing, bringing Dale Alderman over here to the church. And, and boy, I just was appreciative how, how the friendship they had. And I thought about bro Brother Owen. Uh, Brother Owen used to pick him up a breakfast sandwich, take it out there to him, a biscuit out there to him. And it really struck our heart, didn't it, Brother Owen, when God took our brother, spent the day with him the day before he left out of here. I want to say to you, Brother Leo was a friend. He showed himself friendly. And I know that this verse is applied to the Lord, but it also applied to Brother Leo. We love him because he loved us. And we thank the Lord for his friendship. I was thinking about him being a good son, a good brother, a good brother-in-law. He loved his brothers and his sisters. He loved them. And uh, I'm appreciative for him for doing that. His extended family, he cared about them. His cousins, his, his uh, nephews, his nieces, his aunts and his uncles, he loved them. He grieved over them when 
Their pathway led into those grievous areas of life. He rejoiced with them when there was rejoicing to be done. He prayed for them. He did not want to see one of his family members die outside of the Lord Jesus. He had an earnest desire to see his family saved. I was uh, thinking about his being a brother and a brother-in-law and a good son. It grieved him whenever there was a squabble in the family. Now, it really bothered him when there was a squabble or something going on in the family. And here's what he told me one day. He said, Brother Ralph, he said, it just ain't right. There's just no sense in everybody not getting along. Every family would be a lot better off if they take the wisdom that our dear brother had and apply it to their family. He grieved when the family wasn't drawn together. He's a good son, a good brother, a good brother-in-law. On in the hospital, he's a good patient. I mean, the nurses loved him. They didn't mind taking care of him. And he loved them. I'm telling you, he was just a, it was a good thing. He went for the last two years, I think, maybe a little longer, up there to the clinic to have tests done or, or blood and stuff like that done every week or get some kind of injection every week up there at Fishersville. And, uh, he got left there one day and went down and got stopped at Wendy's to get him one of those, uh, frosties. And, uh, as he was sitting there, he said, Brother Ralph, the Lord said, take them girls a frosty up there. And, uh, he said, he looked around. He said, well, Lord, I don't know about taking, I, don't, I ain't never took no frosties to, he said, and he finished, tried to finish his eating and ignored it. Well, sure enough, the Lord spoke to his heart again. He said, take those girls a frosty. He stepped up there. He said, mister, do y'all take credit here, credit cards? He said, we certainly do. He said, I need 15 frosties. <laughs> he turned around and took them up there and gave them to those girls that tended to him up there at the hospital. That wasn't uncommon for him. He's a good patient. He's somebody good to wait upon. I knew him better, though, as a church member. Brother Leo was a good church member. He wasn't melancholy, down in the dumps, had to come to church. He was kind of joyous about it. He come by my study right over there, my office over there. He he was already up. He was in good shape, and uh, he was joyous. He loved people. He loved coming to the house of God. He was a deacon, deacon right here in this church, and a deacon for a number of years uh, right here in this church. Now, he wasn't one of the founders of the church, but he came here right after the church was started. And uh, unlike some of the other deacons that maybe you have known in your church or other churches, the deacon's around here, deek. <laughs> and he is a good deacon. Hallelujah. And uh, I loved him. I blessed the Lord for him. He uh, come to me one day. The, the, the cadets came through. Brother Mike brought the cadets. And the cadets come. They, can, they, they can't tote books and things like that around with them. Brother Leo comes. He says, Brother Ralph, you reckon we could get those boys some little Bibles that they might could just put in their hat and take it with them when they go. Well, sure enough, we got them some Bibles. Come to me one day and he says, Brother Ralph, you know, our missionaries. Well, we started giving the missions and, uh, and maybe up in it every year or every month, our missionary giving. And boy, Brother Leo, he'd, he'd come in and, and he'd be so happy after a deacon's meeting and we give those missionaries more money and, and give them special Offerings, it thrilled him to death. It's always good to have folks around the church that are thrilled when you give away money. 
Say amen right there. I loved him as a church member. Around here at the church when he was able, he did a lot of the handiwork around here. If something needed fixing, something needed tending to, it was Brother Leo that tended to it and he and Cecil Clark and others that, that in years gone by kept everything running around the church house. He was a man that intended on aiding people and helping people. And uh, I bless the Lord for that. He wanted to see the cause of Christ prosper and go forward. Uh, he wasn't wanting to be a leech or a drag on the people of God. He was wanting to be an encourager and a helper. And old oh, friend, he was that. And uh, I got to thinking about this. He was special to me. I think he was special to everybody, but he was special to me. When I first got here, your uh, granny was just turning 100 years old. And uh, Brother Leo, now Brother Leo had heard me preach for a good, you know, a number of years before, but I had just become the pastor. And so Brother Leo uh, took me up there and he said, Mama, I want him to preach your funeral. Brother Jimmy, I've tried to keep it up. And the first thing she said is, he don't look like a preacher, you know. <laughs> you know how she is. And I said, well, I ain't too good a one. She says, well, Leo wants you, will you do it? And she didn't ask, she said, will you do it? I said, well, you better be a good woman if I want to do it. And anyhow, but we, she, she just joked and carried on, you know. Went to see her just a few weeks ago and she threatened to sh throw a shoe at me. Uh, her little foot was exposed there and I tickled it just a little bit and she took and ran back. She almost threw that shoe at me. I said, well, I hadn't had a shoe thrown to me at me by a 106 year old woman in a long time, you know. But he would entrust me with the preaching of his mama's funeral or the thought of it. What a blessing. Sometimes we need a special. Now y'all didn't know that Brother Leo was a, was a recording artist. I'm sure that you, most of you didn't know that. Uh, but we went back. Somebody had a recording of one of the, one of the, now this was just previous to my getting here, but he recorded a song for us. And we found it and we're going to play it for you where he recorded a song. You sit back and enjoy this little thought right here. <laughs> Turkey buzzard sitting on the roof of a tree himself in the air. He looked down at Jimmy and he gave himself a scratch set. Ain't nothing going on down there. <laughs> <laughs> the doors won't play. The members all gone to the sea. The preacher and his family went camping. There's nobody here but me. <laughs> well, you can't serve God and mammon. That's what the good book says. Whom the Lord has called to serve, no business going away. All right, let me get over here. The Sunday school teachers are just like the preacher. They've gone to the mountain to cool. The superintendent, like the gospel dependent, he's obliged to give up his school. I'm beginning to see, it's plain to me, I've got some sense in my head. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth, sitting here on the roof, I'm watching over the dead. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get the last one here. Uh, Chris, am I doing all right? <laughs> Wait a minute, that's the first. <clears throat> There you go. So the poor buzzard bird, without another word, raised his wings and flew to the sky. He bid farewell to every care as he wiped his weeping eye. Where you can't serve God and mammon, that's what the good book says. Whom the Lord has called to service, no business going away. Hallelujah. <laughs> That, that was his thought. You can't serve God and mammon. And, uh, uh, he, of course, everyone knows about how, how he enjoyed storytelling and things of that nature. All of you have stories that he's told and things that he's done. But he's been a joy to our life. Here about a year, well, it was a couple of years ago, uh, Father's Day. 
we needed us a little tune for Father's Day. And so uh, Father's Day, they joined, he joined up and they sang a song for us. This is three generations here, and it's a song called Like Father, Like Son. Like Father, like Son, two roads become one. The stories you told Want you to be warm In a world that was cold You taught me to listen To God up above of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The starts, the steps, and the stops. The scripture said, 
and he delighteth in his way. I think that those words have a double meaning. I think that it could mean that Brother Leo delighted in the way that God led him. And then I think it also could mean that God delighted in the way that Brother Leo followed. Brother Leo had no regrets. We spent a day together at the hospital the last time he was there. And then at the home. He had no regrets in serving God. He had no regrets in following the Lord. He had no regrets in loving his family. The way that the Lord led him was much like I figure it was with Elijah. It said Elijah walked with the Lord and the Lord took him. The Lord called him home. The old hymn goes like this. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercies who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whate'er befall me, he doeth all things well. All the way the Savior leads me, cheers each winding path I tread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter and my soul of thirst may be, gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. All the way the Savior leads me, oh, the fullness of his love. Perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit clothed in mortal wings its flight to realms of day, This my song through endless ages. Jesus led me all the way. At this time, I'd like for our choir to come.
I, I wanted to say it. It slipped out of my slipped out of my little repertoire. Sister Rhonda got all the attention there to start off with, you know. And uh, then <coughs> Brother Chris come along, you know. And uh, that was good. Then Michaela come along. And uh, of course, Grant come in. Thank the girl. But out of the whole bunch, Sister Gail was his favorite. <laughs> now she told me to tell y'all that. 